Hi, Spark Summit. I'm super excited to be here today to tell you about all the cool things that we've been doing in structured streaming in the last year. However, before we get into the new stuff, I want to start with a little bit of an overview on what structured streaming is and kind of why we started to build it. So when we started the structured streaming project just over a year ago, our goal was to build the easiest streaming engine, and we wanted to do that using all of the power of Spark SQL. So what this means is we wanted to give you these high-level APIs that you already know and love, things like data frames, data sets, and SQL, and we wanted to make them operate exactly the same whether you were working in streaming or in batch. Another kind of key problem here is we know that streaming systems are often, they exist in the world, in the real world, which is messy, data arrives late or out of order, and so we wanted to make working with event time a native part of the API and of the engine. And then finally, anytime you're going to run something 24-7 for a long time, you're going to have to deal with failures. And what makes that particularly hard is maintaining exactly one semantics while still running a long-running streaming job. And so another kind of key part of the engine is it's transactional, both in processing and in output, guaranteeing you that you're always going to get the right answers. To make this a little more concrete, let's actually look at a, a real use case. Uh, this is a, a kind of an industry standard benchmark for, for streaming engines. It's called the Yahoo Streaming Benchmark. And it models a, a pretty common application. You have a stream of clicks coming in to an ad agency, and they want to do some analytics on those. So let's look at it specifically in the context of maybe a, a, an alternative streaming engine, Kafka Streams. So the, the Yahoo streaming benchmark is pretty simple. You start off by filtering by a certain type of click and projecting. And as you see, Kafka Streams lets you express this as Lambda functions in Java. Uh, then you want to do a join. So we want to take each of those ads, associate them with a campaign so that we know, you know which campaign that ad is a part of. And then finally, we want to group them by time and do a count. So that's pretty straightforward. But when you look at the same data frame code, it's almost in English. It says exactly what you want to do. And that's because the relational model is a really powerful way to express many of the transformations that you want to do. And if you don't like coding in Scala, of course, you can also do it in SQL. Now, these uh, highly productive APIs don't mean that you have to sacrifice performance. So we took these, the, same, uh, the same benchmark, and we ran it on clusters of equal size, and we tried to see where each system maxed out and where the latency started to spike. And so with Kafka Streams, we were able to get it up to 700,000 records per second, which is pretty good. Uh, Apache Flink, uh, they actually published a benchmark uh, where at, at one of Twitter's hack days, uh, by putting the code generation into the engine, they were able to get it up to 13 million records per second. So it's quite a bit faster. But with Apache Spark, we actually kind of out of the box got 65 million records per second. And the reason for that is because everything we're doing in streaming is building on all of the work that we've done in the last three years on the Catalyst Optimizer and the Tungsten Execution Engine. So things like whole stage code gen, you just get them for free when you're using structured streaming. And what this means for you as a developer is that your streaming application can run you know, at, much, at five times less cost you know, for, the, for the same workload, which is pretty cool. Now, like I said, we only introduced this uh, you know, a year ago, but I'm really excited today to say that you know, we're officially going to be marking the structured streaming engine as GA as part of Spark 2.2. Uh, and you know, we've actually been using it in production at Databricks for quite a while. Uh, in just the last month alone, uh, our production workloads of us and our customers processed over three trillion records. Um, we actually have more use cases that are using structured streaming than DStreams at this point. And uh, the uh, Spark 2.2 release that Matei said is undergoing voting in Apache right now is going to remove the experimental tag from all of these APIs. So those of you who have been following streaming in Spark for a while probably have this question in the back of your mind, what about latency? And I want to talk now about some of the cool things that we've been doing where we've been exploring just how low we can get the latency to go inside of the Spark engine. And to do that, I want to return to our friend Bond here. Uh, we're going to use a slightly different uh, workload than the, the Yahoo streaming benchmark. In this case, we have images coming from all over the world from different traffic cameras. And what we want to do is we want to associate those with the locations where the cameras are and use a machine learning model and then quickly alert on any suspicious James Bond sightings. And the catch here is we actually need to be able to do this in under 10 milliseconds if we're going to catch him. So let's see if we can do this. So I'm going to switch over here to uh, Databricks Cloud. This is a, a hosted environment for running Spark that, that Tim was using before. And what you'll see is I have three different Spark clusters. I have stock Apache Spark. I have an optimized version I'll talk about in a bit. And then I have this thing called continuous processing. 
So let's start with just vanilla Apache Spark. And I'm going to start by writing this pipeline in batch. I think one of the really cool things we added in Spark 2.2 is you can work with data in Kafka and streaming in batch exactly the same way. So I'm just going to do Spark read Kafka. And we'll read from the topic cameras. And let's take a look at what's in there. So we'll display that. And you can see we've got a bunch of images of cars from around the world. But I want to know where these cameras are actually located. So we'll do a join with the locations table. And we'll do it on camera ID. So kind of all of the power of Spark SQL is here. And bam. So now we have this extra column, city, that tells us exactly where these cameras are located. So now here comes the really cool thing. Because Spark is one unified platform, if I want to use the machine learning model that Tim just trained, all I have to do is put it in a where clause. So I'll do where driven by 007 image. And we'll run that. And oh, that looks pretty suspicious to me. It looks like he's in China. Cool. But there's one problem. If we look at this timestamp, yeah, that was five minutes ago, which is way too long. He's probably escaped. So let's, uh, let's switch this to a streaming job. So all I have to do is change read to read stream. And then I'll go here and say write stream. And we'll write this out to Kafka to a topic that all of our agents around the world are subscribed to. Topic equals sightings. So hit Shift Enter, and that's going to kick off a streaming job in the background. So now it's continually reading data from Kafka and immediately forwarding it out. So you can see this is running. But what I really want to see is I want to actually understand the latency. How long is this Spark job taking? So I'm going to run another job, uh, stream latency. So this is another Spark job that's actually connecting to both Kafka topics and looking at the timestamps and subtracting them so we can get the actual end-to-end -end latency of the query processing that's going on in Spark. So we'll let this kick off. And bam. So we'll go here. And what we'll see is that it's pretty consistently processing in around 500 milliseconds. So that's not bad. We went from five minutes to 500 milliseconds. But this still isn't good enough to, to catch James Bond. So we spent the last month kind of investigating the latency in Apache Spark. And it turns out that, at least in this example, a lot of the time is being spent doing synchronous writes to cloud storage like S3. So you could either run on HDFS, or another option is we've created this other thing called the Databricks Runtime, which has an optimized version that actually writes to another service and then lazily writes out to S3. So you still get the transactionality, but you don't have the, the high latency of S3. So I'm going to just restart this query without changing any of the code. And so now, instead of writing to S3 for every one of the checkpoints, it's writing to this other low latency service. Um, and hopefully, we'll have lower latency. So we can see it starts off. And you know, it was at 200, and then 100, and then it pretty much levels off at under 100 milliseconds. So we're getting better. This is now getting pretty close to real time. Uh, but I still think it's not quite good enough to catch James Bond. So let's try one last thing. Let me go ahead and cancel this. I'm going to detach. I'm going to switch to this new mode. So one of the things that we did when we created structured streaming was we made sure to keep the idea of micro batches out of the API. So when I switch to this new mode of continuous processing, without changing any of my user code, I can restart this, this streaming query. And it's going to kick off one single Spark job that's actually going to run for a long time in the background and continually process data uh, that's, that's being read into Kafka. And as we can see, whoa. <laughs> so there it is, under one millisecond streaming latency. <laughs> Pretty cool. So uh, let's actually dive in a little bit more to wh what's going on behind the scenes here. So this new mode, we're calling it continuous processing. And it's a new execution engine that actually allows you to do fully pipeline data processing. So this will be an alternative to the micro batch API, which will, which will still remain inside of Spark. What this means is we've eliminated micro batches from Spark streaming. And it supports asynchronous checkpointing. And for some applications, latency is as low as sub millisecond. And I think one of the key things here is it requires no changes to your user code. So you can seamlessly go back and forth between the different options and choose the execution engine that works best for your, your particular use case. 
And I'm really excited to announce that we've been playing around with this for the last couple of months, but we're actually hoping to contribute it back uh, to Apache Spark. And there's a, a JIRA up on there that you can read the full proposal. So, you know, I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, <thanks. laughs> So hopefully what you've seen today is that with you know, structured streaming in Apache Spark, the easiest streaming engine is now also the fastest. So you know, in conclusion, uh, I'm pretty excited about these two new workloads that we've enabled. Now using Spark, you can use deep learning to do pretty cool uh, machine learning tasks like image classification. And now with the elimination of microbatch, you can also do super low latency streaming. And you can find out a lot more today. There's a bunch of sessions about both of these topics, including a, uh, a one-hour deep dive at 4 p.m. on structured streaming. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the summit.